This video will show the evolution of my sim racing rig and the dashboard and sound system that I just finished for it. For Christmas, my brothers gave us a Cube Controls GT Pro Zero. I was new to sim racing, so I wanted to iteratively build the rig based on interest and lessons I'd learn over time. The first version mounted around my desk. This worked out great for the whole family as the desk and chair were both height adjustable. The pedals and the rolling chair were the first problem to solve, which was a simple piece of plywood with a bar placed behind the front wheels on the chair. I got the kids going on Force of Five in the Hot Wheels zone, which they love. I just got one Come on, I don't want to get a one, I can't see it. The pedal adjustment worked great. Nice job, Nat. But there was too much give in the chair. The next design was a collapsible rig made out of wood. I mounted a next level racing sim chair on sliding rails and designed a pedal mount that could also slide and angle adjust allowing me to accommodate all driver heights. When not in use, the rig collapsed and could move out of the way to allow me to use my desk for work. But the time spent doing setup and teardown each evening made me want a dedicated rig. I wound up grabbing the next level racing FGT Elite. The rig really made the wheel come alive, but it definitely couldn't perform adjustments as quick as my personal wood design, so I found it was easier to just map the paddles for throttle and brake for my kids. Go the A lot of people that use the rig aren't into VR, so I wanted to add sound. I figured this would give me an excuse to try out an Arduino and make a dashboard and take a crack at designing some of my own speakers and do some soldering. Of course, that meant I would need knobs to be able to do volume control and make it talk to windows. I started by analyzing the key frequency ranges associated in racing and noticed that I would need a lot of low end. I found also a variety of bugs and limitations with sound in windows, especially for bass, and found issues in HDMI with NVIDIA for surround sound and ultimately decided I'd have to get an external sound card and do my own DSP. Then I used WinISD to model a variety of speaker and subwoofer options, made my selections, and then I polished the enclosure designs. I wanted to save room in the dash, so I used only a 3.5 inch speaker, but still managed to tune it in the box down to 70 Hz, and got a 10 inch sub tuned down to 20 Hz. Next, it was time to build a dash that could accommodate a variety of controls and house the front speakers, amps, USB hubs, power supplies, and all the other junk that comes with a sim rig. The front speaker boxes were quite long to accommodate the port tuning down to 70 Hz. To maximize space, I modified the sim rig's monitor mount to be on the outside of the rig instead of the inside, giving me more space for the dashboard. Then I started prototyping an MDF. I wanted to maximize the speaker on axis response and add a more interesting aesthetic, so I had a compound angle of 15 degrees, both inwards and upwards, that made the front rather complicated. Then it was time to figure out the control layout. I started with PowerPoint and then moved on to using coins on a physical layout, and then ultimately drew it onto the MDF itself and made multiple adjustments. The MDF was too thick for the electronics, so I used a drill press to drill both the holes and the relief areas on the rear. I got a butt kicker pro for haptics, but wanted to bring the controls out to the front, so I hacked into the unit and brought out both the level and power on off to the front of the dash. Then you go down. The next important feature I knew I wanted was power control, since sometimes things need to be reset. I modified a surge protector with an 8 channel relay to bring low voltage controls up to the front dash. My grandpa taught me to solder, but I've always wanted to get better at it, so I used this as an excuse to come up with a simple prototype board design to get some practice and help wire everything up. I used JST254 connectors to help go between the board and then the DuPonts on the Arduino. Next, I wanted a funky switch, but it was quite the challenge to mount since I don't have a 3D printer and had to devise some method to support it. While this was pretty ugly, the approach worked and I was able to find a knob from Apex Sim Racing. I got everything wired up and was happy to find that up, down, left, right, rotation, and push in all worked properly. Next, it was time to design the subwoofer box. This one also had to be quite large to get down to that 20Hz tuning frequency. I came up with these arms that mounted onto the side of the Sim Racing Rig's monitor stand. Confident in the prototype, I thought it was time to move on to actual carbon fiber panels. These things were awesome, and it made it so much easier mounting those electronics onto the rig. 
Here we can see the little bit of flare that I gave the top of the dash that helps hold those panels in. There's a channel underneath to lock them and how the dash mounts to the rig itself. I cleared out everything inside of the rig so I could start cleanly laying out all of the equipment inside. Here's a couple more views of the shape which is easier to see before the carbon fiber wrap gets on it. Then I wrapped the remaining MDF pieces and completed the wrap around the rest of the box. I built these spacers to set the speakers back just a little bit. Lastly, I redesigned the mount for my funky switch and used the four buttons that were going to surround it as the mounting solution to reduce any sort of screws penetrating the front of the dash. I also cleaned up the cabling on the butt kicker and added some studs to mount it into the top of the racing rig. Then it was time to finish cabling everything. I built all my wires from scratch, so here's a quick process of what it looks like. Cut the wires to length, cut a braided cable sleeve to length, melt the end so that it doesn't fray, and then push the wire through it by scrunching the braid up and then pushing it through. Very technical. Then we strip the ends of the wires to be ready for the JST connectors that are gonna go on the end of this. These are 2.54, so these are the large quote quote connectors. Stick them into the crimper, stick it into the wire end, get it lined up to exactly the right depth, crimp it down, and boom, we got a wire. Rinse and repeat five more times. And then gently push the wires into the connector I usually needed to use some tweezers to get it fully in uh, since these were silicon wires they were a little delicate. Then we take some heat shrink tubing, wrap it around the end of the braided wire and shrink that up so we got a nice finished looking wire at the end of all of this. But wait there's more. Here we rip off the tab to an encoder, bolt it onto the board, Make sure we put a bolt on both sides and don't over tighten because I learned quickly that you can absolutely break these by over tightening them. Next we tin all of the wires so that they'll be easier to solder to the encoder. And then we do the same to the encoder tips. I know this is not the way that wires are intended to be attached to the encoder, but this worked. We put heat shrink tubing on these because these are absolutely going to get bent around and mushed into each other as we mount this thing into the dash, which has not a lot of room for the amount of wires that are here. Quite the mess, 160 different connections, and they all have to fit in that tiny little space. So I came up with a mounting solution to mount the prototype boards. Uh, there's lots of uh, expanders for the Arduino there. Those are MCPs. I was able to ease it in and then check everything out to make sure that I hadn't broken a wire or gotten something loose. Next, it was time to build this thing back up. The following shots show more and more pieces coming into the rig. Here are the relay connections that go to the left side of the dash. You can see there the subwoofer amplifier and the rear speaker amplifier, the butt kicker, the surge protector, the front speaker amplifier, power supplies for the front and rear, and then subwoofer. This is the DSP for the fronts and the sub and then we have a 5.1 external sound card, just the fronts going out of there for right now. There's the butt kicker connections, the relay outputs. Apparently I'm very interested in showing the relay more than once. Then we have a seven port USB hub crammed under there. And what you can't see are all the huge AC-DC power adapters like the one for SimuCube that's hanging out underneath that butt kicker amp. Here we're doing the final install of the left dash panel have to slowly get everything in between the speaker and the uh, steering wheel motor. Then we connect up all the relays and all the other switches and encoders, the butt kicker connections. And then we move on to the right panel. Different view just so that you can kind of see how it squeezes in. Uh, those are speaker connections, potentiometers for the speaker volume. And then uh, we're gonna slide in that board that has all those modules in it get everything tightened down and then we start to push down those cables and those components in between the motor make the final connections across between the two dash panels and then lastly connect up the USB power to the Arduino and we are good to run some tests these are the relay power switches I've got uh, one spare which is why the light didn't come on fit the lid back on here 
and then it'll be time to sit in the seat and see how it all feels. I hope it works. You might notice I had a mesh screen on the right speaker there. I was experimenting with different speaker grills. I decided I want something harder, so I got these uh, perforated mesh panels off of Amazon. I think they look a lot nicer. They're really solid. All right, now it's time to get a little nerdy. Here's the code for the controls. First thing, just as a reminder, is that you always make sure that you hit your keyboard begin. The native USB on these Leonardos can get a little wonky, and if they're in a bad state, they're a pain to power cycle and get back into a load. So most people would do encoders with an interrupt, but because I've got so many of these MCP23017 expansion boards, because I've got so many freaking buttons, interrupts were going to be kind of a pain, and while I could do it, I was lazy. But polling posed its own problem because it wasn't fast enough with the number of controls that I was reading to catch the rotary encoder state changes. So I decided that if I'm turning a rotary encoder or really changing anything, that's the thing that I'm interacting with. So let's stop pulling everything else and pay attention only to this and continuously read it. And if there's so many misses after some time, then we go back to our regular polling loop. This worked out beautifully and I've got great performance on all the encoders and all of the buttons. And I didn't have to write any nasty code to work with interrupts. There's actually so many buttons on this I had to have two devices to make it easier for Windows to handle it. With that, it was time to get everything bolted together, finished, and start enjoying some racing. So a quick pop in the sim with the VR, by no means do I want anybody judging me for this race here. I just wanted to jump in, push some buttons, see how it worked, and get some footage of driving. We've got the sound coming out of the speakers and the sub. That's me flipping the ignition switch there and then pushing the start button. And away we go. 